Here's another limit example. Uh, here is a limit that actually exists. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a different technique uh, for showing that this limit exists. So of course I've plotted it on the, on the right and I've set my x, y, and z variables, uh, x, y, and z bounds such that it fits nicely on the graph. And it looks like everything works. I mean it looks from a cursory glance that everything is good. I mean obviously there's that um, hole in the center there where you have zero, zero, but we're not worried about that. We're worried about the limit as all uh, values approach zero, zero. And it looks like they exist and it looks like um, they're zero. It's like it's exactly zero. So let's actually go through and verify that. And what we're going to do is switch to polar. Switch to polar. Polar coordinates, of course. So we have x squared times y in the numerator. And x is r cosine theta. So we're going to have r cosine theta squared. y is r sine theta. And all of this is over x squared plus y squared, which, as you recall, hopefully, is r squared. Now, this is the important part right here. We've been doing limits where we have, you know, x and y goes to 0 and 0. And you might be tempted to write, you might be tempted to write the limit as r and theta go to 0. But that's not the case. Remember, we want to get toward, uh, we, we want to get closer and closer and closer to the origin. We want our distance, our distance from the origin to get smaller and smaller and smaller. In polar coordinates, distance from the origin has nothing to do with theta. Distance from the origin has everything to do with radius. So we're looking for the limit as r goes to 0 of this expression. Again, we want our distance to the origin to get smaller and smaller. So r goes to 0. Theta is irrelevant because theta doesn't tell us anything about the distance from the origin, only r does. OK, now that we've done that, uh, we can do a little bit of algebra. Uh, limit as r goes to 0. We're going to have r to the third times cosine theta times sine theta, all that over r squared, which is, of course, limit as r goes to 0 of r times cosine theta sine theta. This is a very easy limit to evaluate. Regardless of what the thetas are, right, regardless of what values we choose for theta, it doesn't matter. r is going to 0, and it's going to take cosine and sine with it. So this limit is exactly 0. And that's the problem. All right, I hope you have fun uh, practicing these. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask. I uh, hope you're having a great day, and good luck with uh, limit problems.